Hello everyone and welcome to Reading is Instrumental. My name is Kevin Neuhoff and I play timpani for the Berkeley Symphony. And these are my timpani. Timpani are sometimes called kettle drums because they are round and large and they're made of copper and they look like kettles. I started playing drums when I was about nine years old. My dad brought this old beat up drum down from the attic one day and, and I was hooked. And I'm still playing drums this day. Something else you could do with drums is you can play a melody on a drum. You might know this melody it comes up about once a year. Timpani are part of a large family of instruments known as the percussion instruments. A percussion instrument can be anything that you hit with a stick or your hand. Anything. It could be, could be the snare drum over here. Could be this wood block. Or a cymbal. Or, I have a little set of bells over here. Or, you can use your imagination. Percussion could be anything. It could be one of my favorite instruments is actually a cake pan. Imagine that. Listen to this. Doesn't that sound great? Something else that sounds great is our good friend, Gossia Mikaelian, and she's going to read you this book about dinosaurs. Welcome to Reading is Instrumental. My name is Gassia Mikaelian. I'm a morning news anchor at KTVU Fox 2 News in Oakland, and I'm so glad to be with you. You can tell we love our public library, and we use their safe pickup and drop off almost every week. I know Berkeley Public Library has a similar program, so if you're not taking advantage of all that your beloved Berkeley Public Library has to offer, you should. It's a great way to spend some family time. I'm going to read to you one of my boys' favorite books when they were little and even now today. This is called When Dinosaurs Came with Everything. The author is Elise Broach and it's illustrated by David Small. Let's go inside. All right. Friday is errand day. My mom goes on boring errands and I have to go with her. He doesn't look too happy, does he? And this Friday seemed like every other Friday until we got to the bakery. A sign above the donuts read, buy a dozen, get a dinosaur. I couldn't believe my eyes. Neither could my mom. They must mean a toy, she said. But when I took my box of donuts, the lady behind the counter said, hold on, little guy, don't forget your dinosaur. And there he was. Mom, I yelled. It was a triceratops. What? cried my mom. She did not look happy. How are we supposed to get that home? The bakery lady smiled. Oh, don't worry, he'll follow you. They always do. She looks so happy. And he did, all the way to the doctor's office where I had to go for my checkup. My mom shook her head. What are we gonna do with him now? She looked him up and down. That took a while. We can't bring him inside, she said, finally. He'll have to stay in the parking lot. I told him not to talk to strangers. After my checkup, I asked for a sticker, just like usual. No stickers today, said the nurse, just dinosaurs. With a shot, you get two. I want a shot, I said. The nurse smiled. Not today, buddy, but you can pick up your dinosaur at the front desk. Mom, I yelled. And there at the front desk was a stegosaurus. 
what on earth is going on? My mom cried. It's a special day, the nurse explained. Today, dinosaurs come with everything. Yes, I said. No, my mom groaned. I love how their reactions are so opposite to the same thing. We walked down the street and my Triceratops and my Stegosaurus walked right behind us. Thud, thud, thud. They made friends right away. Across the street, other kids had dinosaurs too. I saw an Ankylosaur, a Duckbill, a Velociraptor. We all waved at each other. Our mothers glared and kept on walking. Mothers have that special glare. I think we'd better go home right now, my mom said. But what about my haircut, I said. The barber's waiting for me. My mom looked at the dinosaurs. Then she looked at my bangs. The barber always gives you a balloon, doesn't he? A nice balloon? Uh-huh, I said. I didn't want a balloon. I wanted a barosaur. At the barber shop, I gave my triceratops and my stegosaurus donuts for a snack. They waited outside and watched through the glass. Look how worried the mom looks. She's like, oh my gosh. The barber pumped the chair up high. He cut my hair too short, but I did not mind because he patted my head and said, wait right here, sport. He was gone for a long time. My mom tapped her foot. I don't like this, she said. Where exactly do they keep the balloons? Just then the barber came back with something flying over his head. It wasn't a balloon. Mom, I yelled. It was a pterosaur. This is too much, my mom protested. Now listen, she said to the barber, I think a balloon will be just fine today. Don't you have any balloons? Sorry, lady, no balloons. You get one of these instead. Look at that pterosaur. I think that's my favorite one. And it was like that everywhere we went. At the shoe store, the sign read, buy two pair, get dinosaur free. My mom decided my shoes would have to last me a little while longer. At the theater, we could hear the popcorn man shouting, butter, no butter, you want a dinosaur with that? My mom said we'd go to the movies another day. At the diner, I wanted to stop for a hamburger. But then a girl walked out with a Tyrannosaurus Rex. The biggest of them all. Okay, that's it, my mom cried. We are definitely not having lunch there. She looked at my Triceratops, my Stegosaurus, and my Pterosaur. What are we supposed to do with all these dinosaurs? We don't have room for them. We can't take care of them. I hugged her leg. Don't worry, mom. They can live in the backyard. My mom shook her head. Sweetheart, they're not toys. Dinosaurs are a lot of work. But mom, look, they eat anything and they sleep outside. I'll do everything, I promise. Please, mom, please. My mom sighed. Well, I suppose we can't just leave them here. Thank heavens we didn't stop at the diner. Look at the dinosaurs eating out of the trash. <laughs> I eat out of the trash truck. That's why little boy's like, they'll eat anything. I guess they will. We hurried home and my dinosaurs hurried after us. Thud, 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 flap, flap, flap. Then we were almost there and we saw a little duck-billed dinosaur standing alone on the street corner. He looked lost. Mom, that's a baby hadrosaur. He's all by himself. Sweetie, we've got our hands full already. The hadrosaur followed us. It wasn't my fault. Or was it? Look what he's doing. I think he's feeding that, the little baby dinosaur donuts on the way home. When we got home, my mom needed to lie down, so I made lunch for the dinosaurs. Looks like this dinosaur is going to eat a whole watermelon all in one big gulp. Then I showed them where to go to the bathroom. Looks like they're in the backyard shed. I told them to stay out of the neighbor's yard because of his mean dog. Does that dog look mean or does it look scared? I think the dog looks scared. And I showed them my slide, my tire swing, and all the toys in the garage. They seemed to be having fun because they really went wild when I took out my frisbee. The hadrosaur had the first throw. The frisbee landed on the roof. I saw my mom watching from the window. Is, is everything all right out there? She called. Everything's fine, mom. We got it down. And my pterosaur flew up and plucked the frisbee out of the gutter. My mom kept watching. She looked at him for a long time. Look at all that. Does your backyard have that much going on? Mine does not. The next thing I knew, he was cleaning out the gutters. Then she came out to the backyard with a pile of wet clothes. These spikes come in handy, don't they? She's hanging up the wet clothes on the spikes of the tail. 
Pretty soon my mom had thought of chores for all my dinosaurs. This one's kind of mowing the grass. This one is helping to collect leaves. Your lawn probably has a lot of leaves on it too. I know ours does right now. When we were finished helping, my mom said I could invite some friends over. It was a bring your own dinosaur party. And guess what happened next? Look at this. Look at that backyard pool. Dinosaurs, friends, food, parents. That is a party. I heard my mom on the phone to the bakery. She asked, do you have any donuts left? And that's when I knew everything would be just fine. And look how happy they look. Walking off into the sunset with boxes and boxes of donuts. A great big dinosaur family. And it looks like the mom finally gets it that dinosaurs are a wonderful addition to her little son's life. So again, this book is called When Dinosaurs Came With Everything, written by Elise Broach, illustrated by David Small. You can tell that we love this book because parts of the cover are sort of like fading and wrinkled and torn and that just means that we love this book and i hope that you have a book that you love and that you get to read it with the people you love and if you don't the berkeley public library can help you out so thank you so much for listening to me read one of my favorite books and i hope you always remember that reading is instrumental wow garcia thanks that was a great story and there's lots of stories like that at your berkeley public library so go down and check them out and if you want to check out some really great music, go check out the Berkeley Symphony. Lots of good music happening there. And now, I'm going to play a special treat for you. A piece written for timpani called Ballad for the Dance. Okay? Let's dance. <laughs> 